Well, I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. I forgot to get the agenda in front of me. Uh, he keeps on covering it when I step up to have more material. Uh, <laughs> All right. If we could, uh, go ahead and just uh, do a roll call. Right. Are all your microphones on? With the red light on. There. All right. Keep those on. All right. Okay. okay. Yeah, they were light on. Means I'll call the roll. Yeah, I think yeah. this, one, this one's yours. One, yeah. Ginger Redlinger here. Bill Clark absent. Jerry Herman here. Doug Neely here. Trent Warnes here. Dorothy Dalzer here. And I uh, don't know if all of you know, but Richard Craven has stepped down. Uh, he's busy. Um, and we're going to. You, you stepped down? Yeah. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we got an announcement of that. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be looking for fighting, a replacement to fill out Oklahoma? his term. Is he, is he fighting fires in Oklahoma or what? <laughs> I'm not sure. It's, he, he's he's going to be out of state a lot doing, okay. doing yeah, work and things. He's worked hard for us. Yeah. We appreciate it. And uh, so I'll be advertising to fill out his term. And uh, as soon as we can get an advertisement out, and you, we'll go through the interview process to fill that position. Why don't you join, join the committee? Then I'd have to vote. <laughs> 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 um, so thank you. We have a quorum. And we do have a quorum. And before we start uh, with our uh, regular agenda that we have uh, before us, I've invited uh, Shelly Perini to come and speak to us and uh, talk to us about a lot of the interesting things to the Natural Resource co uh, uh, Committee that's go going on at the uh, Clackamas Community College. You might say who you were and who you are. <laughs> sure. Do I? Can I stay here? Or do you want me you to? Can you can come up and address the okay. committee up here. Uh, Thanks, Shelly. It has much as to do with, the, I think, the presence of the uh, cameras and so forth, too. Absolutely. Well, good evening. It's nice to be here. My name is Shelley Perini. I'm the Associate Vice President for Clackamas Community College. I've been with them for about 10 years and I've served in a variety of roles. Uh, when I started with the college, I oversaw the foundation, was where we do all of our friend and fundraising, and then added marketing and college relations to the mix. So that's a little bit about me. And then Doug and I go way back and have worked together. And Jerry, who's one of my newest buddies that I've met during this restoration <laughs> effort of the Environmental Learning Center, but I have heard about his legacy for a very, very long time. So it's a pleasure to be able to work with him. And they asked me to come and tell you a little bit about what we're doing. But it's really not a presentation. It's a conversation. So at any point in time, Dee Dee, just stop me and ask if you would a little. <laughs> Why do you look at me? Clarify <laughs> <laughs> or do my reputation precedes me? I'm just practicing your name. There you go. See, all right, we're already having a conversation <laughs> with each other. So I guess I will uh, start a little bit from the beginning, and <clears throat> and I'll start with this piece of material that I've handed out to you. It's called a bond update. And about four or five years ago, the college started doing deep listening and engagement sessions with uh, the community. And the community that we serve is almost all of Clackamas County, but not quite. Most people don't realize that, that we are mission aligned with a very specific geographic region. <laughs> And so Clackamas County serves all, or Clackamas Community College serves all of Clackamas County except for Lake Oswego, and then Sandy and up to the top of the mountain. So okay. that is our geographic area. And we have uh, seven different board members who are elected officials who represent that area. And we started going out and really listening and trying to understand what the community most values about who we are as an institution and uh, what we do as it relates to education and training and where we should be positioning ourselves uh, as we moved into our 50th year of service, which is today. We are now in the midst of our 50th anniversary. And so not surprising what people most valued was uh, education and training that leads <coughs> to a career certificate or a transfer degree. I mean, overwhelmingly, those were the two, two biggest areas. 
the biggest barriers, transportation was one, which surprises people. Another one was access to information, and I think we all are challenged. How do we get the word out on all of our collective great work that we do in education or public, the public sector? But the number one was the cost of an education, whether it was finances or uh, tuition or child care, even the cost of gas. And so as we started digging deeper into the heart and the soul of really what made the place of Clackamas Community College special, there was this theme that continued to come up over and over again, even though it was not the number one, but it came up, and that was the connection to environmental learning, to sustainability, to natural resource preservation, and of course to this wonderful place housed on our campus called the Environmental Learning Center. And so the board did something I think really bold and amazing because as most of you probably know about the rich history of the ELC, if you know Jerry, I'm sure you know it very well, is that it started as its own nonprofit, a nonprofit, this innovative entrepreneurial um, entity that came out of teaching and learning because Jerry, one of the founders, was a student. And it was the relationship between he and an instructor that really started this incredible spark before it became a nonprofit. So I always like to go back to the history and that tie because the ELC and the college were always interdependent and related to one another, just like any other biology network, right? It's not separate, they're connected. But the college got really busy doing what it does, serving students around those core values, and over the time, things transitioned and changed, and the ELC fell into some disrepair. But there it was, even though it was getting a little run down, weeds were getting a little high, the love and the passion from the community was still there. And so the board came together with the support of our president and said that will be our 50th anniversary gift to the community. And I'll pause with this group because I think that is really powerful. Hmm. A lot of universities would raise money for a new piece of art. Clock towers are pretty popular. <laughs> <laughs> but what they are doing and why I, I brought this bond update because what's really important for, especially for those out there listening who uh, are serve on our citizen oversight committee that's the group who makes sure that we're spending the, the 90 million dollars of uh, bond monies on what we said we would do we, were we have to raise that money so it's not it wasn't an easy pass because of the bond <coughs> we knew we would have to raise the money to do the restoration one of the things that was really important for me, though, for the community and for you here to understand its connection to, which is why you see on the back here the ELC, the ELC Newell Creek Restoration plans and description connected on this bond report, because it will, in fact, benefit from the bond improvements. Because right now, if you've ever been in the back of Barlow Hall, you know, we like to call it Barlow Lake. <laughs> and uh, and it does fill up and actually in this last flood somebody had parked their car and it was within hours the, the water was up to the window and going into the car there's just, just this they were at the perfect dip place they couldn't have been better they were parked way away from everybody because they had a nice new car and they didn't probably want to get door dinged but uh, anyway instead it took a bath mm. so that water runs amok and it really flows in dramatic ways as you can imagine into what is now the headwaters of Newell Creek and the ponds at the Environmental Learning Center and does not go in or out into Newell Creek Canyon in the most efficient uh, natural way possible and so that is how the Environmental Learning Center is going to benefit from the bond improvements. It's really from all of the tremendous stormwater improvements that we're going to make throughout the campus. So that allows us then to, to really stop looking at the, the headwaters as a stormwater detention pond and start really looking at it as a natural resource amenity that people can come again and gather and learn and study and recreate and enjoy. And that's our birthday gift on May 24th. First, so I'll just slow, I'm just going to slide around these pieces of paper. Stop me anytime. I hope that all of you will join us. You'll see that we have a number of anniversary activities. There's a wonderful, rich website if you want to find out all the goodies. But 
what I believe you'll be passionate about on May t May 21st, that we're going to have a birthday party and we're going to celebrate that gift. We're going to kick off Jerry and Shaw Spady and I are working on a community giving campaign because there's still some fundraising needs that need to take place even though we're making some good success. <coughs> but mostly, don't worry, we're not going to be asking you for money at the birthday party. We're just going to be celebrating and having fun and giving tours <coughs> and celebrating the history. So I'll just pause there a moment and see if anyone would like to add or ask questions. In my understanding you're going to do some work on one of the buildings as well at the LC. Yes, the pavilion. And how, how will that be used predominantly? It's a classroom. Uh -huh. You can share if you would like to share a little bit more about how it might be used. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it, it's an area that hasn't been very effectively used, and we're looking, really looking forward to that uh, that improvement at that particular site. That's Absolutely. Great. So are we, <laughs> so I'll talk about education piece, then. How's that? Yeah. It, so one of the, uh, uh, the first sort of organizations to step forward to help us, w well, without Metro, it was a Metro Nature's and Neighborhood Grant. Without the Metro's Neighbor and Neighborhood Grant, we we would not have been, I think, bold enough to, 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 to reach out and try to, to raise these resources for this restoration effort. And what that grant really requires, although it's what we desire, both as a college and a community, is to really enhance the learning opportunities there, both as it relates directly to the curriculum being offered at Clackamas Community College and also to our community education partners. But access was important, ADA upgrades were critical, and also just the use of the space itself. However, we're not waiting, and that's one of the messages I really want to, to get across, is we're not waiting for the restoration effort, we're already using it. Matter of fact, every Wednesday afternoon, the water environmental technology class is happening over there. And it just, Jerry, I can't thank you enough for leading these cleanup efforts, you and your crew, oh. because just after the very first cleaning and because of the renewed use as a classroom, again, it's not as robust as it's going to become, but it's, it's happening. Right. It's happening. And that's one of the dreams that I keep hearing out of this. Uh, I'll talk about the historical preservation project we're doing. But as soon as we started to open up the door and people could see in, it started to be used again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I interrupted a couple of students uh, and asked them, you know, why are you here? And one was in the WET program, Water Environmental Technology Program. And his lady that he was just enjoying some peace and solitude with is in our nursing program. And I gave them some space and walked around, and then I came back, and they had taken some little rocks and made a heart on one of the benches <laughs> that you had created there. And it just made me feel really wonderful yeah. to see so many people using it. Yeah. Uh, but the pavilion is really underutilized. Uh, I would say Lakeside Hall is starting to get uh, much... Uh, more well known amongst the college community as a meeting space and also as a classroom. But the upgrades to the pavilion, I think, will be a welcoming addition. When I went through the Metro <clears throat> grant document, which I never did carefully to prepare, prepare for today's meeting when I had, had with you, I was looking at uh, the grant really closely. It was very well written. I don't know who wrote that, but it must be a collaborative effort. It was very well done. But one of the points they made was that the, in addition to science, technology, a demonstration site for the community in terms of water quality and other issues, not for the community, for technical people as well as the community. It talked about a recreation area for the South County area. And I still believe the Environmental Learning Center and the college as a whole, along with Oregon City's legacy project and things that are happening in the city, such as Clackamas Cove, is a tourism asset. and. I, it's not a big jump to, to look, look at being a recreational area mm -hmm. to be a, a tourism asset. Quite often, recreation and tourism go hand mm -hmm. in hand, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I, 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 my dream is to see a tourism program evolve at Clackamas Community College, formal training program, certificate-wise or otherwise. And this week, Bob Red Mill lady pulled me aside and said, are we going to do that or not? I said, do what? That tourism program, we're in. I said, who's in? Bob and I are in. Nice. Congratulations. So, you know, I mean, they're a tourism asset. Well, why would that be? Right. Because they have something that people love to come 
enjoy, but they also show you how it's made, their it's product. A big, it's a big destination. And you have all these products mm-hmm. called students mm-hmm. that are in different mm-hmm. venues of learning that I think people would go to see different, you know, things being offered in uh, ELC could be a stop, horticulture could be a stop, maybe some of the other things that I don't know about that are being done up there that could be shown off. Um, you got a wonderful kitchen there now, which has always been there, but now great caterers that can do fine food, you know, good food for people to come in on a bus tour, that kind of thing. So with our new cafe yeah. owners. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I really want to thank Dee Dee and, and Doug for helping out with the cleanup too. And I know you're gonna help us on Saturday. That's right. Anybody that wants to we're open to that because it's you know, it's really neat to go in there and be able to Get get it looking uh, more. I hate the word kept because that's the wrong term. More in, in character with what it could be and, and was. Well, and that's going to be. I think that's one of the the uh, areas that we need to work on over the next year together, Jerry. Because yeah. there's the the restoration effort, and I, I'd say Jerry, but really all of us who care about that place in Didi. I remember I saw you. We met. If you remember, you were trimming yeah. the trees, and so it's, yeah. it's good to see you again. But is we need to think about a plan to sustain the stewardship piece. Right. Because that's what keeps community together. That's what keeps people loving that place. And if we want it to really be a tourism destination in the future, we have to find a way to be able to create a friends of the environmental learning center or friends of the headwaters at the environment, whatever it might be. But at the end of this community giving, it's not about raising money and we're done. I think really so that the ELC never again falls into disrepair, sure. that it stays a well-treasured, stewarded asset. Yeah. We have to form some kind of friends group. Anyway, I don't want to get ahead of that, but I, I think yeah. that's what mm-hmm. it's going to take. Yeah. And you're absolutely right, because in this discovery process for me, and you've just uh, been wonderful at sharing the vision, when you come onto campus, you don't know where the headwaters of Knoll Creek. So we're really dealing with an identity issue here too. Here you have this beloved asset, but very few people know right. where it is or what does that mean. And so Shaw Spady and I were doing a walk about Friday evening and trying really to, to determine where would be the best place to create some signage where we could also put together some type of learning laboratory. And I can't let the cat out of the bag too much, but there's a dream to do some type of uh, native garden, native species garden, and uh, and it's something that we're actually we're getting into that business in horticulture. We're doing the propagation right now, so it ties literally to our curriculum development of teaching and learning. But anyone should be able to learn if it's out in a natural environment, not in a horticulture lab, mm-hmm. right? So the idea is to bring it out of the lab and into the uh, environmental learning center area. And so here we have this headwaters of Newell Creek at a historic environmental learning place that flows into Dual Creek Canyon, which has just celebrated the new master plan of Metro, which yep. flows into, of course, the Willamette with their restoration. And so you're right, we should be connecting the dots, not just for tourism, but for all of us, this beautiful ecosystem that's interdependent on each other. And that little creek has to work hard. It's got it's got to get underneath the road and going across and down. And so you imagine the cleaner and easier we make it, the, the, the better it's going to be for the entire system. So it, it, there's a lot of wins if we do this right. But the first part is obviously uh, it's the restoration effort. And then on and, and, and top of that, one of the concerns I heard from the community is as you move forward, don't forget about the rich history. So we've started a my co-chair here, we've started a historical preservation project for the Environmental Learning Center. And uh, we're looking at ways in which we can embed that rich history into the, the top fabric of the ELC. And this, this learning garden is just one of many ideas. I believe another one came up is there's a headwater heritage forest that we're also that looking at. I think that was Doug's else, idea. Yes. So the ideas are, there are moving forward and I think it's gonna make it a great place. and for all kinds of educational opportunities. I've met five people just on Saturday who said that they had some type of skill or expertise that would like to bring it to the college for community ed. So I don't think we're gonna lack in people to wanna use it. Can you tell us about next week's event and and are we invited? Yes, you are invited. Thank you for, (laughs) for bringing that up. So in front of you today in the spirit of Earth Week, 
Uh, we are holding an open house at the Environmental Learning Center. Also, one of the, the sort of comments that kept bubbling out of the community was, what's going on? You know, they didn't quite, I don't know that we have done as broad enough. We've been so focused on trying to raise the money and the historical efforts we have not uh, done as good a job as we should, just inviting the entire community in to walk around and tour it. And now that it's looking so lovely, we thought we would invite people in for an open house to continue imprinting the process and sharing your dreams before the birthday party. So I hope you all can come. So what's the time on that? The time on that is a 2.30 to 5 p.m. Which day? Wednesday, April 20th. And there's going to be an all-star cast conducting tours. Quite a crew, I've heard. They, they know their stuff. The Business Alliance president today asked me about this. He'd heard about this, and he wants these distributed at the Business Alliance meeting Thank at, you. on Tuesday. Thank so. you. And it will be very family-friendly. We actually, uh, Allison Heimowitz, who I'm sure many of you know, who is one of the authors behind the beautiful Metro Grant, okay. uh, I found some of her earlier work in the childhood education pieces, so we're going to use all those little coloring books and just recycle and repurpose some of those. So it's going to be something for everybody, besides something to learn, something to color, tours, exploration, and also, again, opportunities to continue imprinting the process, which is what's important. Kids love to color. What? I said kids love to color. They do, and it's yeah, it it's a, has a lot of activities in it, too. So. In case they don't can't keep up with all Jerry's historical uh, <laughs> stories, they can they can follow the activities in the guidebook. Can you, can you, yeah. no, I, I think Thank I you. cornered you at the ELC because I had mentioned how wonderful it would have to have a fountain up at the headwaters, and then someone else mentioned, well, that's a hundred thousand or more, <laughs> and then yeah. I said, well, maybe if you could find some old patron or alumni that for a future down the hill, down the road, that might want to. Make it possible to sip from the headwaters. How rare it is to have exactly. headwaters anywhere, and to have a headwaters right here in Oregon City is rare. We it traveled is. to find the Columbia headwaters. Mm -hmm. That was hard. Absolutely. So it's really kind of cool. That's it was very cool. And very those are the I about you know, and DLC. all the ideas that are coming forward are really cool, and all of them are going to stay. I mean, how how and when we in, you know get to put them into play, that's mm -hmm. up to us. That's something we do together, and that's what I keep sharing with folks. Every good idea comes forward has to have a champion to stay the journey. It's exciting. I love that. Thank okay. you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Sheldon. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. We Pleasure might, to be we here. We might have a, a viewing audience that has picked up on some of this, too. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, very good. So we only have one set of minutes. And these are the minutes from the work session that we held in the Oregon Trail Room on October 29th. And uh, I know you probably didn't have time to review those online because I didn't attach them online. So. Uh, and Ginger was, was chairman then. Chairperson. Correct. Right? Good thing. And we were preparing for the City Commission work session on November 10th, so we held this work session in order to uh, prepare <coughs> for that. Um, and the upshot is summarized at the end here. Uh, Chair Redlinger summarized the presentation plan. The purpose of the meeting with the City Commission would be to enhance communication. We'd run over the NRC accomplishments in 2015, ask the City Commission to consider adoption of our revised bylaws, which they subsequently did, and uh, consider the NRC's questions at their annual retreat. So we did some consolidation of our work plan at that meeting, and we're going to go over that a little later. Um, anything to add? Okay, uh, 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 I'm not sure. I'm not sure what our policy is. I know <laughs> the city commission does not pass their minutes on work sessions, just on their council meetings. Um, but if if, uh, if you if we want a motion, then somebody's uh, free to put forward one. I move that we adopt the minutes as presented. Do I hear a second? I'll second it, since I was there. Good. All those in uh, favor of the motion to adopt the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Thank you. 
With that, we are uh, coming to old business. We've got the tree, regu uh, the, uh, tree regulations feast. Uh, uh, what have you prepared for us on this now at this point? I don't have anything prepared for you on this. Okay. Um, but is there anything that you would like me to go over with respect to tree regulations at this point? Um, we've had some presentations on how our, how our development review regulations work in the past. Um, basically, I can talk about this and come back to you with a more prepared presentation. Um, we have four sets of code, essentially, that deal with trees. We have a heritage tree code. We have a public tree code that applies to trees within public spaces and rights of way. And within that is the heritage tree regulation, or um, uh, the heritage tree regulation was in that section, but now it's been moved into its own chapter. Um, and then we've got a set of tree regulations that apply strictly to development review. And then uh, finally, we have the Natural Resources Overlay District. So those are four distinct separate pieces of code that deal with trees depending on where those trees are growing. And um, we're going to be reviewing tonight an application for a natural resources overlay district application, so we can talk a little bit more about that. Um, and I know there's been a lot of discussion about the Heritage Tree Code. <coughs> That's a newly adopted code that has been approved by you um, and the City Commission and Planning Commission as well. So, and that is now in effect. Um, the one set of code that really has not been revised since, uh, um, well, lar largely revised is the public tree code. Um, you know, that's essentially the same that, that has been since 2004, uh, with a few, few tweaks here and there. Um, the development review regulations, or chapter 1741, which applies to site plan and design review, land division, that sort of thing. Um, that was uh, d uh, revised and adopted in 2010, uh, 2008, and then 2010. Um, and I think you are, that's probably the more complicated piece of code, and that's what staff uses to review uh, tree removal and mitigation plans on private property that are going through land division and site plan and design review. Uh, at this time, there's not been any call or direction to remand any of these codes, with the exception of the Heritage Tree Code, which we already looked at. I didn't hear you mm -hmm. saying anything about Heritage Groves. <laughs> heritage Stands. Still, heritage Stands. <laughs> stands, I'm sorry. And, and uh, the reason I asked is yeah. that I'm, I'm still, since we're talking about tree issues in general, I'm still trying to figure out whether Waterboro Park is considered a heritage stand because we looked yeah. at it as a commit com, com, uh, committee. Yeah, it was four formally. years ago about, on another issue. We decided, mm -hmm. I thought, that it didn't need that stand status since it's already a natural park. I'm talking about the hillside. Uh, so the, the the park itself is a, is a designated stand. Or, it's or, a designated. Or, or who, who did that we, designation? We, I, yeah. I, yeah. This came up before, and I was yeah. trying to recall it coming yeah. before the commission as a designation. I didn't recall it was. Maybe it was. It was. Okay. Um, um, that's what. That's where that designation came Focus from. You guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, I wasn't clear on I that. Can, okay. Yeah, I can come back right. with the the minutes on that. So meeting. Is that the only yeah. heritage stand in Oregon City at this time? Yes. That's what I thought. Yeah. So what yeah. you might have heard. Um, <clears throat> Or presenter speak to um, was Shelley. Mm -hmm. Was that a number of us? I'll let you tell tell them about it. the heritage grow up the college. Well, you brought it up, so you, I mean, oh, you're the one okay. you originally well, brought it up. Oregon White Ash that borders between Oregon City Senior High School and the campus. Mm -hmm. And I think Doug, you've done some investigation. It seems like some of it's in college, but most of it's in, in high, high school, school district or or in uh, private ownership. Okay. A lot of it uh, towards Newell Creek is mm -hmm. uh, toward, uh, towards Beaver Creek is Beaver Creek. actually in, apparently under private ownership. Okay. But it's almost con contiguous Oregon White Ash with an understory of violets and things like that that are very unique to it, you know. Is and this on the far we, side of the parking huh? lot? Is this on the far side of the parking lot by the trail between the high sure. school? Yes. Okay. I, yes. I drove around to look right. and I went, that's yeah, the only place I could. Lines are mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And the, the deal was, we thought, in, in conjunction with the college's 50th year celebration, could they consider us somehow 
us working with them or whoever mm -hmm. getting that set aside as a heritage stand. I set aside meaning identify. Mm -hmm. And Florence Lee, this goes way back. She was a botany instructor up there and the biology instructor of the college, a uh, very, very sharp lady. She was, oh, anybody who touched that thing, they were executed. <laughs> I mean, it was, she kept it very serious. Uh, they did transects in there of uh, little quadrangles that they did studies of the flora in each area and all that. And uh, mm -hmm. it's never received protection. And I, I suggest, we suggested that something happened. Maybe this committee nominated. And you talked about Greater, greater Oregon City Watershed, didn't you, Council, doing it or something? Somehow we jointly nominated. Yeah, you know, it it came up. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd like to see us move forward with that. I mean, yeah. under new business or something. Okay. I'll yeah. volunteer to help put all the paperwork together. I think I think to okay. get the. It, we can. I don't think we can make recommendations for trees that are on private land, but we can make recommendations in in other areas. Uh, City. Property. To what that mm -hmm. that path is probably in the ownership predominantly of the high school. Okay. And uh, yeah. and so it it may not that be that hard to get segments of it yeah. uh, designated uh, through the high school. Mm -hmm. If we get to the high school on that one, that'll open up some of the other yes. um, grounds too. Because you know Eastham's, I've worked on that one. I'm, I'm working on it a second time now. But there's several schools that I think if we get one that we can open up. Yeah. The, there's another small grove standing at the St. John Cemetery of White Oak. Mm -hmm. And there's three of them that really want to do it and three of them that are scared to death because they're afraid that there'll be fees on the back end. I don't know why. They're just afraid later are we going to have fees for heavy heritage trees. There's some fears out there that are real that you just can't say, no, you'll never be charged for anything again when they'll go, you know, I mean... But th these things will open up doors. Yeah. Well, and, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to see us form a work group or something. Yeah. To move, keep this thing moving forward because the college, I think, is interested, and I think we could approach the school district yep. and DD are on fire about it. And yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah, I got three other projects Shelley on too. Shelley wasn't willing to say where it's been considered to have a the so-called native garden, but it mm -hmm. would overlook, and you'd look to the south, and you'd see that, and then you'd see all the LC, then you'd see the community gardens. And then you'd see the Home Arts Society from this viewpoint, which is just a little bit higher than anything else around there. So it would make a logical thing. You, so you totally could see tie where that. the headwaters really were. Right. You can so tightly that, tie that into the Oregon Gardens and stuff. For yeah. Tourism. Yeah. I really can see that. So I guess my question would be, who yeah. would be on the work group? You I'll would? be on the work You'll group. Lead it? Um, I don't know how to lead that one. I'll, how about if you point me and I'll, I'll step. You say step, well, Dede, and I'll fetch it. And, okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I go, I have three projects I'm already working on, which will be fine because mm -hmm. I can put that one in with the other three. Yeah. Probably and, one of the best things to do initially is to talk to the superintendent of, yeah. uh, of the Oregon City School District. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, I mean, eventually would probably have to go to their, I would imagine, their board to actually. Yeah, do I've like actually that. been working on that. <laughs> I, I have kind of walked in and got a, a card of person I can start yeah. to work my way through a board meeting. Because well, if, if, if you have staff behind it, it looks a lot easier for the uh, It sure does. Yeah. And, and, just, and then practice some que step up questions that they're mm -hmm. going to ask. I mean, I, I thought, well, I'll just try my first presentation. And there's three questions. I just kind of just went and stumbled. And those are the, they were all money. And I, Since I've sat through a lot of those and presented at a lot, feeling old at the moment. Um, I'd be happy to help Yay. put that together. Yeah, yeah. that's that. right, all those people. You put the information yeah. together, we'll put it together as a nice presentation. Kind of a 10 point bullet ten. what are the 10 yeah, most can, top questions. We can yeah. do that and then get you up there and then I'll sit behind you and go. Yeah, we, yeah I rehearse it a few times, I can, <laughs> I can pitch it. anything, but I gotta get the facts down and rehearse it. <laughs> Pete, we don't have to do it at this meeting, but maybe at the next meeting, if you could uh, uh, bring forward the uh, the overlays for uh, wetlands and water, because a lot of this area is in wetlands that are mm -hmm. designated mm -hmm. wetlands. Resources, so yeah. if you could bring forward that map, it might it might be beneficial. Mm -hmm. And also, sure. if you could have the property property line designations, so we know mm -hmm. how many 
private property owners might be. Because uh, we might right. even just wouldn't hurt to drop off a little application to each one of those. Say we'll do the paperwork for you if you sign it and be part mm -hmm. of that grove. Yeah. Good idea. But neighborhood associations up there too. Maybe mm -hmm. we can pitch the neighborhood association. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. okay very good. And just to turn you in, since we're pushing so forward on this, let's jump on it quickly because I'm going to be gone for the month of May. <laughs> God, so I don't want to like start this and then go. Where would she go? <laughs> <laughs> very good. Yeah, very good. You've been appointed for lifetime service. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, in terms of the update on the ELC, uh, I, 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 is there anything other than the presentation here that you wanted to bring up? Well, what happened was when David Evans and Associates started to actually review the file, they noticed that there was a threshold in the original master plan for the college uh, that the proposal exceeded. And uh, the original proposal was they couldn't exceed their existing building footprint of 38,000 square feet. And uh, the there was a slight increase in the wetland boundary because of conditions changing in the soil. And subsequently, um, the regulation that kicks in when that is in effect is the applicant can either choose to use the old standard or the current city code and the applicant wanted to use the current city code which is what you already reviewed and heard about in the current city code um, when you read that city code it talks about a cumulative disturbance area of 500 square feet um, and beyond that it is a planning commission review and it did exceed 500 square feet with the pathways and the canopy and that sort of thing mostly with respect to some of the pathways that were not considered exempt from the regulation. So the, all, the other thing that triggered the threshold being exceeded was the amphitheater itself, um, which, was a, which is a necessary part of the thing. So this is largely a procedural issue in my mind. It doesn't change the impact on the resource, but it does trigger review at the Planning Commission level. Subsequently, we've re-noticed it for April 25th to go before the Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. So they'll be hearing it. Um, we're writing the report. We're going to get uh, David Evans and Associates' recommendation very soon. And I fully expect that it will go forward and, and be supported um, by the Planning Commission um, with, that, with that slight change. Yeah. yeah. And, and we're talking about, of course, the, the engineering, too, of the, uh, the facility. Absolutely. And, and that is what is also coming before the Planning Commission. Everything will be Everything part will be of it. it. Yeah, the stormwater findings that the Public Works Department will be making, including the staff report. That includes the runoff coming from the improved parking lot, which has 25 spaces. And so the gravel area that's parked parking area today is going to be um, part of the new impervious surface calculation. Um, and as those areas are going to drain into swales, vegetated swales that are being designed according to the the new stormwater standards that we have. <coughs> yeah. And they'll drain through that system into the into the system that they have. So that will be part of the review. In fact, public works review is limited to drainage and grading in accordance with their with those new standards. Um, most of the code was locked in place in 2007 when the master plan was approved. So with the exception of this natural resources issue being a type three review, everything else is based on the prior code. Yeah. Um, and because it's tied to the grant uh, and the timing of the funding and the need to do it, um, Oh, just because yeah. the type three is a, is a staff review essentially. Type three is a planning commission decision planning commission with a decision. staff recommendation. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Type two is a staff review. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's what it was before. Uh, is it ultimately going to have to go to the city commission or not? No, just planning commission. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, so the other thing, they wanted to do this now uh, bearing in mind that they will be coming in and amending the master plan for the entire campus because of the the bond 
uh, and the phase one building and all of the larger, larger improvements that are triggered with that improvement. Um, this is not part of that um, and it's not going to trigger those big street improvement issues and things like that. Yeah. Okay, that's the update on ELC. Um, sure. If you want to come on April 25th and voice your support, you're, you're welcome. Yeah. Any, any other comments or questions? Okay, <clears throat> coming into a new business, uh, review the natural resource 16001 type 3 NROD application okay. for single family land of record and uh, <coughs> We're going to get a picture. Yes, we have a presentation. For and I assume this is why Laura is here. No, this <laughs> there's no Laura's just here to listen and. Oh well, thank you. And maybe talk. <laughs> have great suggestion. So. <laughs> One second. Lights down. Yeah, it's not up there. It's just we're not going to get anything. No, he gets no it on. Input. No input. No input. Stand. Let's try that. Oh, it's the laptop select. Thanks. There we go. Some seventy. There we go. Mm -hmm. This one? Yeah, you got to flip that uh, there to the uh -huh. right, I think. I sent the dates for the Oregon City School Board meetings for the rest of this year. Let's to look at. You sent it to her? I sent it to everybody already. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we got the board so minutes of it sent to us. By email. By school oh. board. By Ginger. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You don't have to look it up. No. Thank yeah. you. I'm just trying to keep my other. Yeah. Well, mine didn't. If you go. <laughs> Bear with us. I'm a lefty. <laughs> Can we take a five minute recess? <laughs> we hope. We could only hope. Right? Laura, I don't know if everybody knows the, the uh, if you want to come up here. And yeah. Because, of course, you're familiar, but I don't know if everybody knows your new position or not. <laughs> Good evening. Laura Tarway. I'm the interim planning manager for the city of Oregon City, wow. and I'm just here Good to um, touch base and um, say hello and Good. see how things are going and uh, support Pete. Um, so any Less support. <laughs> <laughs> um, any questions you have for the planning division? We're here to help the city in any way that we can. Any suggestions for anything that we could do different um, is always welcome. I, I just would let you know that everybody I think here feels that over the last uh, couple of years, uh, uh, the. I think there were some tensions earlier on a couple of years, you know, before time in terms of how we're involved and so forth. And I think it's been uh, 
uh, from my side, you've been here probably longer than anybody else, but uh, uh, I think it's made a great deal of difference, the yeah. reaching out of the Planning Commission to work with us and through Pete and so forth. It's, I think it's been a very positive relationship. That's great. And, and, what, and that, that wasn't the case a few years back, I know that. Yes, that's true. That is great to hear, and I would also have to thank um, the Natural Resource yeah, Committee and Pete as well for all of your work on the Heritage Tree Code and all of um, the things that you've been working on are very, very helpful, and um, it's been nice to see the spread of information and the attention that's been paid to natural resources in the city. Um, as, as far as the other meetings and groups that we attend, there has been a lot more information out about what's been going on and the projects that you've been working on. Um, so it's been great to have a nice partnerships and sort of connect the dots and network a little bit and share our resources. What, so what does interim planning manager mean versus planning director? What is the difference? Uh, we don't have a um, planning manager or a director. So uh, Tony Conkle is our community development director, and he is also the city manager. Okay. Um, so I've just been appointed interim planning manager to sort of help out with daily tasks of the planning division while he's off um, working on city manager stuff. So. so is he still functioning as city administrator and planning director? How many hats does he wear? I swear. <laughs> pretty amazing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it's very, very nice yeah. to. Uh, you were mentioning earlier the the website and stuff was changing. What what regards? Just curiosity, like are you just totally reformatting. And, I mean, what, what's changing exactly? Great question. Um, everything. Um, so a lot of the content will remain, and we want to make sure that we're um, sifting through all of our content to. Um, get rid of any outdated things and make sure that everything that is on our website is valuable and up-to-date. But uh, the city is working on a project to change the look of the website. Um, in the planning department realm, we are so excited to share so much information with the public that we post a ton of stuff on our website. And it's great if you know which sub button to click to get to it. Um, and so we want to be better. We want to um, always think of ways to improve and make sure that the information is out there and the second part of that is that it's easy to access or easy to find um, so there the whole website for the city which is www.orcd.org is getting reimagined in a way and we're sort of changing our mindset of how people use the website and they formed a community committee to look at it um, including people who have never seen the website before people a lot of people who have or people from different points of view to see what people want when they access the website and what's missing from the website that ought to be there and things like that. Um, so it's a good city project and I'm not sure what the timing is on that but um, it's not it's not tomorrow I can tell you that. <laughs> it's, like, it's gonna be a long thoughtful work in progress. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exciting. Uh -huh. Thank you. you. See I see you guys interrelate quite often with uh, public noticing and things like that, citizen involvement committee. Is that getting sorted out? It sounded like it was problematic. Is it getting better now? Or? It's great, actually. So um, the, the CIC, the administration of the citizen involvement committee has moved from um, the city manager's office to the planning division. And um, so I'm li the liaison for CIC. In the past year, um, we've codified the CAC, so we want to recognize the importance of citizen involvement to the city, and we want to put them in our city code, right, like the NRC okay. is. And um, so we've done that, and we've created a work plan. And right now, we are on the tail end of finishing our public uh, information plan. So we are created a subcommittee at the CIC to figure out how to get people to both neighborhood association meetings and to the CIC meetings. And not only that, but how do we really create a genuine avenue for two-way information so we can hear what people are saying and, and tell them what we're doing. Um, you, you pay for us, so you should know what you're getting, right? Mm -hmm. um, and all of the good products that we're working on, and sometimes those don't always get advertised out there. But we want to know what, what are good things that are happening so we can make those good things happen other places, or what are some concerns that people have. Um, so this is a good first step to activate neighborhood associations. The next project that we're starting to work on but haven't quite started yet, but we will next month, is working on a plan for how to support neighborhood associations, so some type of booklet or information to make sure that 
when people change chairs that there's a flow of information and that there's a base of guide of information that chairs can learn from. So maybe like interesting topics. So Neighborhood Association recently had um, someone from the city come and speak about their water bill and sort of decoding what it means. And it was really useful and they got a good turnout because people wanted to know that, mm -hmm. but we didn't, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was taking those steps to figure out what people want to know and then also how to really convey that inform information back to the city and, and make sure there is a return on that information and under, understand that we've taken it and we're doing something with it. So um, it's really good, actually. Mm -hmm. It's great. Good. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you so much, Laura. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> Okay, sorry about the delay. Thank you, Laura, for filling in. <laughs> so, um, as your bylaws state, the Natural Resources Committee, one of your responsibilities is to review uh, applications within the Natural Resources <coughs> Overlay District. And those types of land use applications which potentially <coughs> affect natural resources. Um, and so, uh, just to give you a little background on this application. Um, this file number is Natural Resource or NR 16-01. It is a Type 3 Natural Resources Overlay District review and I'll explain why. Um, it is in the Park Place neighborhood um, on, and I'll show you where is it. Um, this is a, what they call a lot of record, a pre-existing lot of record, 0.11 acre, 5,000 uh, square feet. Um, and when we look at the next property map, you'll see in more detail what this is illustrating. The address on the property is 16348, which is directly in the middle of your screen here. Um, you'll notice that the purple boundary is the Natural Resources Overlay District boundary and the stream location that we have in the center of that. And then you'll see a mapped wetland area, which is the brown uh, shaded area within that right next to the blue line. So this must be in Park Place? This is in Park Place <coughs> between Hiram and Front Street. Um, mostly in an area of existing single-family residential development with some vacant parcels um, affected by the Natural Resources Overlay District. Uh, the, a lot of the construction and development in this area preceded the current code and um, for that reason, there is a provision in the current Natural Resources Code which allows for m limited development for existing lots of record that fall entirely within the NROD. And this lot falls entirely within the NROD. And when that situation occurs, the code allows for a maximum disturbance area. Um, and I'll go into what that means in a little more detail. So currently the site, oh sorry, Currently the site is vacant, it abuts Frederick Street and the dark shaded area there on, of Frederick Street means that it's unimproved right of way. Uh, it's either gravel or maybe some asphalt but it doesn't come up to current city standard. Um, <coughs> Frederick Street <coughs> south of there has some paving and that sort of thing and you can access it and that is uh, currently a maintained street. So, so this mm. blue thing that flows through here. What that, is that? That is a, if you go out and you look at the site, I'll show you. Okay. Uh, I'll show I'll get some photos of it. Um, let me jump ahead to the photos so you can see what it looks like. So it's, it's a, basically a channelized stream. It's a channelized it? stream. It's got <laughs> concrete on one side and uh, it's been channelized a long time ago. Um, there's the channel on the edge. But it's still considered a wetland under our local wetland inventory, which was done in 1999. Um, it doesn't meet the criteria for a uh, locally significant wetland, I believe, but this is still under review by the David Evans and Associates, which is our res water resource consultant. So let me jump back to the description of the of the project. Uh, the applicant was proposing to construct a single family residence the house would occupy 1,032 square feet and the driveway and sidewalk and rear patio would occupy 468 square feet. Uh, 
and that is under the 1,500 square foot allowance threshold for a lot of record. Uh, code also requires in these situations a minimum setback of 25 feet from the ordinary high water mark or the top of bank. And a setback of less than 25 feet from that resource requires a type 3 review. And so this, that's what's triggering. Description of the resource, uh, it's a perennial stream. It, um, they identified that. Uh, it flows from east to west uh, along the northern property boundary. Um, the applicant's consultant refers to it as Ferguson Street Creek, but I don't know that that's a correct name. I don't think it has a name. It's referred to as a PP3D on the Shapiro Wetland Inventory, which is the inventory that the city uses. According to the municipal code, typically a perennial stream in a wetland requires a 50-foot vegetative corridor, except in the situation we have, which is a lot of record situation. Uh, not listed as locally significant in Table 5 of the Shapiro Report. Um, this is the delineation submitted by the applicant, which shows the uh, extent of the Shapiro wetland test plots, which are, and I'm sorry for the resolution on this, but there is a larger map in the materials that you're welcome to come and take a look at. Um, um, we have not sent this out for public notice yet. We're going to send it out for public notice on, on Friday. Um, um, and then the test pits that the applicant has dug are listed as SPs, I believe. So um, all the SPs are test pits or PPs? What are PPs? They are actually, I think those delineate the uh, Shapiro wetland uh, segment in the city's inventory. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So this is the site plan for the property that was submitted um, it's to scale and one inch equals 10 feet you know if it was on a piece of paper uh, shows where the footprint of the house is in relation to the top of bank and a 17 foot setback from the top of bank and that's what triggers a type 3 review uh, since it's less than the 25 foot minimum so what, what kind of mm -hmm. uh, what does that uh, type 3 to versus just the regular sorry yeah. Um, it's a what that means in land use process language is it's a discretionary review. It requires a planning commission decision and a vote uh, by a quorum of the planning commission as opposed to if it was a type 2 review, staff would review it based on the code, based on the criteria, and we can only approve what is in the code. I got you. Which is 25 foot. Yep. 1,500 square feet. So this difference between 17 foot and 25 foot triggers a type 3 review. Yeah. That, um, mm -hmm. it, I mean, I, I, it, with the concrete wall we saw is on the mm -hmm. lower portion, portion on their side of the property, basically. Correct. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't imagine, given the nature of that uh, creek, um, there's much... Even though it's a, it has a wetland uh, designation, there's probably not that much that occurs in terms of wetland uh, <coughs> vegetation or anything of that nature. Yeah, we haven't seen the results from David Evans Associates okay. uh, yet. Um, so they will be able to confirm whether or not there's a wetland condition to right now. Uh, is is there any, um, when, they're asking, when they were asking for a reduction of 25 feet, is there, any kind of uh, uh, mitigation that can occur with uh, that kind of setback that might actually improve the 17 feet that is uh, there yeah. compared to the 25 feet, which doesn't really have much. Mm -hmm. Right. Let me go into the mitigation. Okay. So, oh, uh, I, I, yeah, that's I, okay. I was just trying to get <laughs> <the> slide. That's <laughs> <laughs> so the mitigation process, uh, there's two options in the code. There's, a, there's the option where you're removing large trees in a natural area and, or you have a bare property where you're basically calculating the amount of your impact area within the NROD, which in this case is 1,500 square feet. 
and the code requires that you provide twice as much mitigation area as impact area, which is 3,000 square feet. And then based on that 3,000 square feet, there's a, just a, a spacing of plants required, and you calculate how many plants you're required to plant. In this case, they've proposed planting 15 trees and 50 shrubs. I don't know if David Evans and Associates will agree with that number. They're going to check it and make sure it meets code, and they may say that does or it doesn't. So we haven't seen the results of that yet. The, the yeah. 15 mm. and so forth, the 50 mm. shrubs, if that's the, the mm. landowner's desire? Um, well, well, that's what's, we will check it to make sure it meets the minimum requirement. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty yeah. aggressive. I'm aggressive. Yeah. Um, so along with that, there's a plan requirement as well and a narrative description required to show that there's no uh, impact to the potential for fish, uh, spawning, and that sort of thing. In this section of the creek, I don't believe there are. This, this any, creek yeah. links to what? The Clackamas it, or to Abernathy or what? Uh, no, it won't go to Abernathy, no. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know that it would. It goes down no. the bluff into Abernathy Creek, I believe. But I could be wrong there, Doug. What do you think? Well, you heading. may be right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's the at the top. It's going to come down Holcomb into. Yeah, yeah. you're probably right. By the, you're probably right. Yeah. Um, this is overlooking Apperson. Correct. Sort of. Apperson overlooked yeah, the old probably huge. Is. Yeah. Flat. I should have zoomed out lives. more to show you where it actually flows, <clears throat> but um, uh, it flows from. It, in the in the uh, description you just had about salmonids and so forth, it, mm -hmm. is there is there obstructions to salmonids even getting there? There probably are further yeah. down. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know. Or would they be asked to consider that? Or no, would you be they're, asked? They're only required to mitigate what they impact on their property. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it says the yeah. unimproved Fredericks and that Fredericks Street, and that's where the concrete driveway is coming yeah. through. You'll notice that I it, go it, down it goes there. into a, uh, a storm <laughs> pipe underneath well, the road. Yeah, then, but there yeah. was like, um, looks yeah. like part of the whole so yard was planted in into the... Yeah, you kind of you can't even tell where. At one point, the street just disappears into people's yeah. backyards. Right. But up a half a block, there was a great big yummy cedar that kind of ha hangs in the street. <laughs> well, again, this the, blue thing that flows yeah, through. That does yeah. it's, it's an it's an open it's an open channel. So, okay. Yeah. Across that section of Frederick, and then it goes into a storm pipe under Front Street, not Frederick. Okay, so this yeah. blue thing I see on my aerial. Yeah. Uh, what is that? That's a stream. It, oh, it's that's a stream the within. Stream within corridor with 50 and there goes on the, okay. Typically, yes. And there's a culvert the then? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. In the road? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Going into mitigation plan. Wow. Okay. So this isn't super high resolution either, I apologize, but this indicates two zones of planting. Um, area A, which is right next to the, within the ordinary high water mark, um, where they're going to be putting plugs and saplings and those kinds of riparian things. Mm. Um, and then the area B, which is the darker cross-hatched area outside of the ordinary high water mark, which will take up most of the north side of the yard which will be planted in more upland species. So they're planting 15 trees and 90 shrubs in that area. Um, and this would become protected by a restrictive covenant um, as part of the title of, of the property. So if the property changes hands in the future, any subsequent property owner would be no know that that area is a mitigation area for the natural resource overlay district. How, how big was yeah. the lot again, size-wise? 5,000 square 5, 000, feet. 5,000, okay. Yeah. A lot of the lots up there were platted at 5,000 square feet, and even though they're zoned R6, which is 6,000 square foot, not a lot minimum, but they're allowed to use the same setbacks as an R6 zone mm -hmm. uh, because they're pre-existing lots. Okay. Of mm -hmm. Who did this mm -hmm. rendering? This was done by the applicant's wetland consultant, um, and I, the name escapes me for the moment, okay. um, but so, when it, so the way the process works is their consultant turns in the application and then the city's wetland consultant reviews that yeah. to make sure it meets code. Okay. Yeah. So they've been mm -hmm. spent some effort on this, haven't they? 
little yeah. money too. For a single family home, it's quite a yeah. quite a significant application. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of work to put together right. this, which is why, to the extent possible, the applicant has drawn some of the site planning themselves. But the parts that had to be completed by an expert, like this, yeah. um, that's required to be done by a, a water resource specialist or an ecologist who's qualified to. A, do the delineation according to the Corps of Inf Engineers methodology and then put, a, put together a mitigation plan and planting plan that meets code. Um, that's not something that your average homeowner is permitted to do unless they're qualified that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and I believe... So with the mitigation going out in the Frederick Street Road, then then they're basically not opening up Frederick Street. I are you are you trying oh, to the, keep it? You as mean if they're doing street improvements, yeah. abutting the property? Let me go back because they're coming through mm -hmm. in an area that's completely undeveloped. Yeah, right. right. So the portion doing. that they would have to improve or pay fee in lieu for improvements on Frederick Street um, is let's see not quite touching the the resource but that so it come off clear street coming in that way i think they're planning to access off of yeah, off of coming frederick's that yeah, way it actually ends right there right. at the property because then the creek turns and goes north before it goes okay because so i was looking yeah, at here and i was thinking it was this yeah, property it here connect through down here it's this one here. Yeah. okay there's trucks parked yeah, there you could i couldn't get down there well we, we will totally need to look at that we don't know what improvements are actually going to be required on frederick they may be doing what they call fee in lieu of improvements and then um but that we will need to look at that to see whether or not there's any additional impact area. But since it's in public right of way and not on a private lot, um, that's going to be something the public works department is going to have to look at. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. The, f to the extent practicable, they're going to need to, you know, access the house from the, let's see, site plan. The driveways on the south side okay, of the property. Well, there's there's yeah. a pick, pick there's up truck park. Right yep. Fifteen foot yeah. driveway and a five foot setback, so about twenty foot of access on Frederick. I'm just amazed uh, that uh, I'm glad this is happening, but I'm amazed that this much effort's going into a ditch. <laughs> it's nice to see it, you know. And you have the authority to require it, right? The city does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's various ways you can, uh, you know, you can go through a process. You can you can go through a process to get a development approved yep. with impact and mitigation and that sort of thing. Uh, you can go through the same process to prove that a resource no longer exists or doesn't actually isn't supposed to be there. And in this case, you know, the applicant chose to go the development route rather than to prove that the resource no longer has the right. values. Right. Um, so, um, you know, that's what we review. Yeah. We're, we're not reviewing an exemption request or a verification request. We're essentially reviewing a modification request. Yeah. Well, it, it's mm. a kind of a nice mm. demonstration project, I guess, of, of, um, of a new intent. That's, okay. <laughs> that's yeah. what I'm saying When here. they're done and uh, the plantings are done, and, yeah. and, and then there's a four-year mo monitoring period afterward, they were, they're required to provide a monitoring yeah. plan for four years. Hmm. And if at the end of the four years there's less than 80% establishment, they have to replant and um, make sure that it's at 80% at the end of four years. So but there's a year-to-year monitoring requirement and who, who does that monitoring is it the, the owner is responsible okay. for and that. they provide mm -hmm. you guys with reports or they're supposed to provide us with reports yes. Okay. yes so what's our role well uh, <laughs> um, it's, it's I think um, <clears throat> um, you can comment on it 
if you wish to uh, now uh, or come in individually. Um, I, I'm not, uh, it's, uh, this is that issue we're dealing with with the timing of the notice. The notice will go out on Friday. All right. um, and, uh, but um, we have a newspaper notice that's been, that's been published today. So, you know, the notice period is open. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the, we have to provide notice 20 days in advance of a public hearing. Um, so, so this you know, public hearing will be next month then? It'll be May 9th. Yeah. It just seems uh, like a teachable moment mm -hmm. in, in the light of Ginger being an educator that for the public at large, here's somebody that didn't choose to fight and, and discredit something, even though it's a ditch and instead decided to enhance the ditch in front of their property. Mm -hmm. And it seems yeah. like it's a yeah. neat yeah, it's a approach. Good, it's, a good, it's a good approach. And I'd like to see it, you know, yeah. endorsed and somehow <clears throat> written up. Yeah, maybe uh, Park Place can use some you, help up there, you know, too. Even, even if love. it's a ditch, there might, there might be a habitat above it, and there may be habitat yeah. below yeah. it, and actually having a vegetative corridor. Yeah. Shading it and so forth may may have value beyond that piece of s section. So if if you wish to make a, a motion to either support it or uh, that's up well, that's, that's well, up to the committee. I, don't know. Mm -hmm. I would make a motion, I guess, that uh, mm -hmm. we support the project because of its uh, demonstration and uh, advocacy attitudes presented. Um, and that somehow the project uh, be showcased as it develops. That's what I'd like to say for others. But that's my motion. That's up to Doug. Your second? I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, very good. Thank you. Yeah. And I think I know where this creek starts, up on Swan Avenue, doesn't it? I believe you're right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I can tell you that the the folks up there, not anything against them, had no nothing but bad things to say about that creek for a long time. <laughs> Still there. <laughs> well, that's the nature of these things. But they, it was a, it was a bad ditch, and I said we should vegetate this, and and they were fighting the berry vines. I said once we got the berry vines, what's your next plan? And they said we don't have a plan. We want to cover it up, fill it up. I said don't do that. You'll get in trouble. I think it is interesting. <laughs> and, would be I mean, speaking candidly, without you know looking at any application, you have yeah. development coming in and enhancing a resource, yeah. whereas there's a, there's oftentimes there's more benign neglect going on when there isn't development. And so it's an, it's interesting. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens to the two lots next to it. Approach that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then the loss of the street. That's mm -hmm. I can see. Feuds over the street. <laughs> mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very instructional, actually. Very, yes. very much so. Well, I should have mentioned that. Sorry, I meant to mention this, but the trees that are growing on the property right now um, are fruit trees. Fruit they're, trees? Yeah, orchard trees. There's like six or seven of them that are there. And they'll uh, remain or they'll go? They're, well, some of them, they're in the footprint of the house. Yeah. Oh, it looks so, like they have a photo yeah. up. The yeah. Um, and then, uh, but they will require mitigation. Um, and uh, according to the code. Yeah. You're not going to require them to build the house around the <laughs> Well, we encourage that. But There's a, a vacant mm -hmm. lot on 12th and Main that I was being asked to figure out how to landscape with young people or whatever. And there's a tree right in the middle of the, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, in, in the middle of the car sales, Weiler Chevrolet's car sales <laughs> building. And they grew, uh, grew up, I don't know, 20-inch diameter tree? I don't know, tree of heaven, no less. <laughs> right through the building. Yeah. Well, there used to be a tree of heaven. <laughs> and the, right and the county's <laughs> going to re-landscape that, or, you know, that parking lot properly. And uh, anyway. <laughs> that will go on to communications? Well, we have one more thing. Um, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, review. Yeah. So back in uh, January 13th, we had edited our work plan, and um, I 
when I went and uh, looked at it and I accepted all the red line changes that we made, I just wanted to bring this back before you as a clean copy so that you can see it. Um, what I did was I took off all the red line changes and I added the city commission goal in a separate column on the left so it's a little bit easier to read because it used to be all combined in the NRC responsibility column. Um, and then uh, just wanted to go through this with you and we can uh, uh, take a look at it. So under our um, responsibility number one, which is promoting community involvement in natural resources conversation conservation that aligns with the city commission goal four which is to seek opportunities to maintain communications with citizens and facilitate citizen participation um, under goal four there is also the uh, Willamette Falls legacy project and advancing the waterfront master plan so we had listed those under our responsibilities as well um, the activities related to those we have are uh, conducting the natural resources tour. I wanted to confirm that we are still doing that or, or not because um, I wasn't sure about yeah. that one. I, I'd like to do that. Yeah. I, it was with the committee's help. I'd like, okay. I'd like to see us do it again. Uh, when is the question? Yeah. Fall, fall I think. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't know. The only other one I had a question on. What we did was we, we, we got the, the trolley then. We'd have to get a bus now. And you paid for the bus last time. <laughs> Somehow you guys did. Mm -hmm. Blue Star, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Bus line. And uh, we did about a three-hour tour of in, enhancement areas and things underway and showcasing various things. I thought it was kind of good. Anybody here on the committee that was with, the, with us on that? You were, weren't you, Doug? I, I don't remember. <laughs> Uh, yeah. That sounds interesting. But it was a neat deal mm -hmm. to get people out uh, yeah. with us to see projects. Yeah. All Foliage and Heritage Tour, I yeah. think it was called. I'd be willing to work on that again. The second activity is preparing educational materials about street trees for distribution to the public. Um, that's something that staff is working on. Mm. Uh, and we already have that on our website. Um, so as Laura mentioned, we're still trying to improve our website and get the materials out in a fashion that's a lot more readable and accessible. Uh, so we'll be doing that ongoing. Um, 1C, developing signage for improved public awareness of natural resources. Examples, streams and trees, development sites and heritage <laughs> sites. Um, we don't have a, a lead on this one or a timeline yet. Would you like that to be somebody within this group? Yes. Yeah, I'd sure like to see us do that. Um, and, and we're developing sign, signage? Well, I think, Doug, do you want to talk to that? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I had recommended early on, um, and looking at it in terms of the net next budget cycle, which I guess would start next year, uh -huh. um, to actually give signage on the major roads that streams go underneath. I, I think a lot of people just, including myself, right, I mean, don't realize what's going it, on and what the, we're driving the, on. What they are. Uh, so to have that kind of a signage on the streams, mm -hmm. and that's what I had recommended. Okay. Good. Very, good. Um, Very good. All right, so I have this little idea. I'm just going to share it now so I don't forget it. That we come up, you know, the, the little library movement, the people are putting little library boxes. For yeah. People to, well, we could do like little NRC, little Oregon City boxes in a similar vein, yeah. and then have pictures of trees or you know whatever it is, if it's a water site or whatever it is, and people could open it up and find information about. Oh, okay, yeah. so yeah. that's yeah. actually on a, on, a on a route somewhere. On a route somewhere. Yeah, okay. And then we can make a map where all the little boxes are, and, and hmm. then it could be like right. you know, a little NRC library. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Yeah, I've seen those where you open up and there's little trivia questions inside. Yeah. And, and the the front of it could be the logo, yeah. the city logo, but you know, it's kind of you no know, carved wood or something. Where could you see a little library demo idea? Like there's design? one right over by on the turn as you're coming up Oregon City High School and the turn where that giant tree is on the corner. Yeah, right across Kitty Corner from that tree. Just there's a little library right there, free library right there. 
Mm -hmm. what's that, what's sometimes that they look they, they just cute. look like little kiosks, mm -hmm. or sometimes they just look like little boxes on posts. So oh, there's a, a, it's where is where you can look up information there yeah, at yeah. that site, oh, and yeah. you can go on websites. There's a, it's so a national. Then you have got, you know, then you have to have a big sign to mention that that, that, that that that's what it is because I didn't know what it was either. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. But it's a, it's a national registry, and you can choose to make your own, or you can join them and be a numbered. Little and house. And maybe we can make that like and the they, next viral thing. That right. They have poetry boxes too, and yeah, so this would right. be similar to that. Yeah. Um, and then we can share it with other cities, and they can come up with their own. And we can put them on the same registry, and no. you know, we can actually connect that to our website too, mm -hmm. because I was thinking if if we had something where we could quick ID trees yeah. that that are yeah. on on our things and oh that's what that tree looks like and oh it has all the specific I can print that put it in my file with that tree that I'm nominating partner but with the library board yeah partner with the library board and you also partner with the construction class at Oregon City High School that loves to yeah. do yeah. City yeah. projects mm -hmm. that's a great idea mm -hmm. does that mean your name's gonna go on that slot Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will help. I'll help you with that too. That yeah, I'm sure so you. I'm cool. sure you get some support on that. Well, and Dee Dee, you were talking about uh, having us have a booth or some uh, exposure yeah, at farmers market. farmers market once a oh, yeah. once yeah. A, a month. Jen, Jackie offers a booth, and I'm doing it for the Oregon City Parks Foundation in the morning, so I can. I'm a morning person, so if you volunteer, say, "Oh, Dee, you'll do the morning." Because I'm a morning person, um, but I'd be happy to do that because right, it's well, a great way to spend Saturday mornings. Farmers Market will be added as a separate line, uh, oh, separate good activity. Good idea. I mean, yeah. e each thing we suggest, we need to put on our work plan. Or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, along with that, and I don't know if this is the time to bring it up or or not, but I just kind of noticed that when I come go to different. Things I see a lot of you all here too. So so many people wear so many different hats um, that it kind of make you want to feel like you want to throw a badge on yourself. Saying I'm with the NRC or I'm with the the PPNP or the CAC or you know you have people have stickers all over. Um, but I kind of thought maybe if we had like a slogan or something. And and I'm doing something myself. I'm going to suggest it maybe it would work with the NRC and that's a slogan of one tree one of one family once a year meaning nominate a tree clean a tree of ivy somebody save plant or love a tree just one tree one person wow. or one family once a year mm -hmm. it's harder than you think I'm trying to not get one tree to take clean of the I mean I can't contact the owner I'm in their house 15 times but it's a very it's right on 7th Street, it's right next to East Eastham School, so I'm thinking a little bit of happiness, a little bit of shame, all at the same time, you know? One person, one tree. It looks small, and it's, a, and it's so grassroots that I think those are the kind of things that you can give a sticker to somebody. They said, we're going to clean our tree in our yard. Well, here, take a sticker and put it on your car, you know? Again, just something so simple, and then if we're going to... All right, one more thing, and if we're <laughs> and if we're going to like showcase, get our our logo out there, see what we're doing, um, t-shirts or badges or something really simple like the these people that are that are going out of their way to do the, the planting along Ferguson Creek there. Maybe if we're profiling them and the a little newspaper, we can give them a sticker to put on their car. Again, one person they did this for 17 trees, or you know, something where we can publicize it, make them a local hero, a local lord. You so can put OC initials in it. Sounds like that's uh, kind of under maybe goal four or goal five of what you're talking about. Well, you're talking about when you we were. Yeah, I probably should have just waited until we got. No, no, that's that. okay. That's okay. But um, I'm just not sure where do we have to develop these funds ourselves? Is that just something we get grants for? Because you can, we can use old voter signs, or well, we. Can no, I guess it should be under. I guess it thing. should be under go up there. But um, there but something if if we're where we're somewhere, we could stuff that little sign, and then we take it with us when we go home. 
But Let's someone will say, what in the heck's that for? Oh, well, Let's here we go. Let's flesh this out. Okay. What, I, I and, guess, uh, uh, yeah. And then decide which ideas we like the most, I think, because we have, you know, a lot of ideas which are good ones. And then uh, in terms of funding and that sort of thing, we probably have to have the discussion once we've decided on what it is we want to do. But, um, uh, it, yeah. Did we get did we get onto it and I may be missing it. Did we get onto it? It's not it's not unrelated to what she was saying, but uh, mm -hmm. probably broader in terms of our focus in terms of getting the information about designating heritage trees. I'm sure most people don't know that's possible. Is that on this list? Uh, no, it is not. We should. Uh, I think it. yeah. I think mm -hmm. that's uh, and and. Then, all those me me things think, uh, of the tree and so forth of, of a yeah. one that's really designated uh, could uh, could showcase it as well. Advanced public awareness of heritage tree program. Because at this point, you just roughly have how many people have put up their trees for heritage trees. There are, there haven't been that many, I don't think. No, they haven't. Yeah. I'm kind of making it my mission to go to each neighborhood meeting. And pitch it. I'm pitching it with my own right now, but just just to hand out applications, and if any one person can suggest mm -hmm. their tree, their neighbor's tree, they can send get back the application signed, and we'll do the footwork for them at first. You know, okay. kind of. Well, wouldn't your farmers market some, a good place for that? Yeah, uh, I think so. No, I mean, I would, would. I would be willing to help you with that. And it'd be nice farmers if we had a little booklet of some of the trees, and so when people ask us questions, we can come back with some answers. Well, the city's maps already have them on there, don't, doesn't it? So. Uh, the, yeah, the maps. Yeah. The the GIS does, and yeah. then they're listed on our website. Um, yeah. yeah, but we should have some hard copies so they can have at the farmers market with maybe in large symbols that we could probably beef up them or put a big circle mm -hmm. circle around them where they exist because they're pretty small elements but have that yeah you know, and it'd be nice people to be show a picture that. of the one that's there and, and the one that's going to go we should make a scene about the one ever on Thompson how we can get him to plant it and make him a superhero replant in another well, tree what we would Judge like to get then are some <laughs> photographs and if people want to get permission to take photographs of those trees and bring them to staff that will help us tremendously that they do. Yeah. All right. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, come, I'll come over tomorrow and get a list of where all the trees are. I probably have two of them already done. Yeah, because the, the photos that I have on the website were taken when they were designated, at the time they were designated. So, and they're not very good photographs. And I'll show yeah. some projects. We'll, we'll lay some out projects, the ones we're working on, see if kind of support sure. people. What the heck? Okay. So that is a DD. Well, before we leave this, who, who, the signage thing is really important. I, I agree with Doug. Nice. Um, is, uh, do we have a lead on that? Somebody to take the lead, lead on that whole thing? I, oh, I can't, but I just. Ginger I came up with I, I, a slightly different idea from the signage. So okay, that's maybe true. that should be a separate okay, right. issue. Or how do you, do you want to well, modify Well, there's a little bit. No, I, I don't. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I, but I'm talking about a sign that identifies a stream. Stream, right. And so right. it's yeah. what, what we're talking about is a little bit different on yeah. that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that's a separate thing. That, right. And are those right. like standard signs that you see, you know, that are Looked like they come from the highway department. Shows a picture of a stream, or or, or or it could be a customer. it could be a city sign too. I mean, mm -hmm. it could be one that yeah. that that uh, comes we right could from put our forward some yeah. designs of ourselves to the commission or whatever wherever it goes through to. Right. Essentially, there needs to be a nexus with a city goal, stormwater management, and that kind of thing, in order for it to be considered a city or government-owned sign. Um, we can't talk about content of signs because of the sign code. And it's this weird legal content neutrality issue. <laughs> content um, neutrality? What yeah, is that? it has to do with sign code and freedom of speech. So we cannot regulate or say if we're going to allow a sign to be placed next to a stream. Yes. Depending on whether it's on private property or public right. Of I, I was visualizing it. It's on... Where they go under streets, I was visualizing it would be on public property. Yeah, so if it's in public property and it's publicly owned and there's a nexus to a city program, no problem. 
Uh, we just have to get public works to sign off on it. Well, one way or another, the streams are all part of the stormwater system. <laughs> so. <laughs> right. So Martin Montalvo is very familiar with this issue because of the stream sign that was planned next to Washington Bridge. So uh, I think probably we'd go through that same process of getting Public Works to sign off on the sign once it's designed and we've figured out a location in concert with Public Works. Yeah. yeah. Or parks, to, if it's a park. Yeah. So yeah. who's leading this charge? <laughs> well, that was my question. Um, some of this is probably going to come from the Watershed Council, I believe. But um, well, I, I, yeah. I'm I'm kind of interested. In it, so yeah, I could, okay. I could well, the Watershed Council has never put forward that. Uh, well, I'll take that back. Watershed Council uh, is talking about signages on projects that they worked on. Okay. Um, just but I don't I don't know that they when they when we uh, when the Watershed Council looked at that. It was talking about actual sites that the Watershed Council had worked on as opposed to identifying names of streams. Okay. I'm sure the Watershed Council would support that idea, but that's not what their signage plan was. Um, well, I think your first project in this case was going to be like a pilot, I think. So if it's successful on one stream, you replicate it elsewhere. Um, uh, so I'm more than happy to assist with that um, uh, if you want to help guide me to where well, you want to I'll, I'll go ahead yeah. and put the lead on the on the on the on, the, on signing okay. streams but I think it's re yeah. it, it, it's it, it was something that I was thinking that ought to go on the goals of the commission so that there's a funding source for the signage itself. Funding source, yeah. Now you do have, I mean, you do have certain signs that you've already got. I don't know if it's the, uh, I don't know if it's city because I know it's city property, but you've got, for example, uh, Coffee, Coffee Creek's Falls there is designated a, a sort of an ad, uh, 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 with a certain yeah. kind of signage. Yeah, and Hellendale Park, same way. And all the storm ponds and the uh, ones that are mitigated and maintained by public works have that signage on them. So, but I was thinking, mm -hmm. I'll, I just want to be clear. I was thinking of something that's just visible from the sidewalk or the street, where people driving by it can actually see it. See it. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I understand. Right yeah. So we need to come up with design and a funding source. Yeah. Um, so 2017 is. The next time the city commission looks at the budget, so uh, we will pitch this to them in November, I believe, of this year, uh, in anticipation of the city retreat. Sure. Yeah. Great. Do we consider for funding in 2017. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Good. That's good. Yeah. So I will do work on this uh, <clears throat> heritage tour thing, and I'll ask after after uh, anybody else want to work with me on it. I'd I'll be, I'll happy. be fine. I'll have yeah, it. Sure. Okay. I'd love to see the forester help me. Yeah, sure. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think that one of the things we've ignored here, <laughs> you know. Okay. I, I've ignored it in the past. So, so, moving on to NRC responsibility number two. This is tied to City Goal 3, which the little booklet here has your city yeah, goals on it. Yeah, I looked at that. Um, which includes the, uh, the current sewer moratorium projects, stormwater master plan, Beaver Creek Road concept plan, waterfront master plan, transit service in Oregon City, and Tri-City Service District governance. Um, so to the extent that the NRC can provide input on those ongoing updates, um, then uh, that is within your bylaws. Uh, I, w I would really like to uh, mm. work on the North End Waterfront Master Plan. I'd like to, well, maybe somebody else would like to do that too, because I think it's one of the areas that there's some real opportunities. Um, I don't have a lot of information on the status of that, Jerry, right now, but I'll write that down and right. come back. Um, I do have some information from John Lewis on the stormwater master plan. 
I'll we'll talk about that. Okay. Anyway, uh, anything else on this one? That's an ongoing task. Um, NRC responsibility number three, receive notice and comment on land use applications and projects within city limits and urban growth groundary. Um, hopefully we're doing a better job of getting those notices out to y'all, mm -hmm. uh, especially with res on a timely manner. Um, let's see. I, I have a question for you. Of yeah. the, the amount of material that I've seen, mm -hmm. how much does the planning division receive on a weekly basis? <laughs> I mean, Are eight or done? ten or twenty or thirty or what? What is it? Well, we have an open counter from eight thirty to three thirty, and then we have what, whatever is in the pipeline in terms of development review. Um, so four planners working. And then two planners working on Willamette Falls Legacy Project um, exclusively. Uh, we have two new planners, so we're busy, and it's a busy time of year. Um, so, but I, I don't know a number right now. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, NRC responsibility number four: conduct orderly meetings that result in communications. Is that correct? Is that what we wanted it to say when we approved? When I when I hit accept changes, that's what it came out as. But I wanted to make sure that that was the correct language. It's Which is that for? What? Oh, in our on the next page, on page two at the top, it's for um, conduct ordinary, orderly meetings that result in communications. I think it previously oh, it said uh, improve communications with various bodies and things like that. But yeah. Um, that, that result in communication uh, improvement. Anyway, the, act yeah. the activities that we put under this are reviewing NRC meeting agendas with staff prior to meetings with time frames. Um, I got to say, I don't think I've been doing as good a job at that as I should have. Um, I think ideally two weeks prior to the meeting, I need to be talking to Doug and to you all informally via email to make sure that we have the uh, agenda items keyed up and ready to go. Um, 4B, maintain and update a list of natural resources committee priorities to share with Planning Commission and City Commission. This is an ongoing thing. Um, 4C, provide updates and annual reports about NRC accomplishments and recommendations to the City Commission. And this is to occur September and August in our meetings in advance of the city commission retreat in preparation for that. Uh, finally, NRC responsibility number five, coordinate with PRAC and planning commission on an annual basis. Are we doing that? Uh, do we, we've done work sessions with uh, planning commission uh, on an annual basis. Uh, still working on the PRAC annual meeting. I happened to look at the January meeting uh, mm -hmm. while I'm close cable access and, and uh, Doug was uh, sitting up on the dais here with the other PRAC members and I'm wondering if there's any, any way to share th things that you think are important that PRAC is doing that we should know about or vice versa with them. Um, well, I'm sure there's a benefit to it. Um, That you're a joint let, member. Let me uh, let me feel that a little bit with the track, but uh, so there are certain resources that belong to the city, I, and I don't know. That, well, I'll tell you. Let, let, after the member communications, I'll bring up something I think that would be related. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look back here at the wording that you were questioning, and that's oh, sorry, the responsibility yeah. for conduct orderly meetings that result in communications. Um, look back. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking at what we put under there and, and seeing if there's a better wording for it. Okay. That result in improved communications. I think that was our whole issue is that, that we felt we were not communicating, perhaps, and vice versa, with the powers that be. I think that's what I felt. But 
Yeah. Um, so well, I, get, I guess, but, but I, new agendas, that's fine. Maintain updates, natural resources, share with city commission, right? Provide updates and any reports to recommend to the city commission. Um, Look at the original red lines here. I think things are a lot better myself. Uh, I don't know how the rest of you feel, but uh, I'm, I'm disappointed that generally that there aren't people attending these meetings. <laughs> uh, a number of us have talked about that, and maybe we have to just do a little recruiting. Uh, Frequently, what results in people attending meetings is something happening in the city that they don't like. I agree. <laughs> I, yep. I it's usually a good indicator. <laughs> we offer free huh? beverages. That might get them in. What was that? If we offer free beer, they might come. I, I heard that was, you said there was an ice cream machine back there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, it turns I, out it was just an ice I, cream machine. I was going to suggest maybe conduct orderly meetings that facilitate communications with the Planning Commission, City Commission, and be specific what what, what that is. I mean, that's that's who we're that's who, that's who we're attached to. I think so. Uh, so, right. yeah. the, the, that facilitate communications yeah. um, I, I, improves the suggests that uh, maybe there's something wrong. Maybe there is, but uh, but I think if you use the word facilitate, it suggests. Uh, there, yeah, cro good cross communication amongst yes. other <laughs> committees, right? And, and 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 since both of, since all of the things that are in here, uh, you know, it's uh, where they're referring to other uh, communications. With other, one's in Churchill between us and staff, but the other two are the planning commission, city commission. So, uh, facilitate communications with. Uh, among staff and with the funding and city commission to make it make it clear what what communications we're talking about. So conduct orderly meetings that facilitate improved communication among staff and the planning and city commissions, which are the ones we are ultimately responsible to. Okay, city commission, planning commission, and PREC. That's easy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Very good. The um, now for communications. Yes. You want to take them one at a time, starting with the Earth Day cleanup events. Right. So uh, we've got a. Blue card, or sorry, green card. I gave you more than one, so you can hand these out. Um, Saturday, April 23rd, 2016, Clackamas Park, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. They'll be doing the cleanup. Uh, be light lunch provided. Um, please bring two cans of food for the Oregon Food Bank, and wear an Oregon City event shirt from years past in order to qualify for the raffle. Um, and then uh, you must be present to win. Uh, if you have any questions about this, contact Code Enforcement Department, 496-1559. The registration starts at 8.30. And why, I was looking at the sponsors here. Isn't Solve still sponsoring this, in part? Is they're not listed? I don't believe this year. <laughs> Uh, if they are, then let Nancy know. Okay, no big deal. Mm. Um, That's how it started. Yeah, sure. How do you find some of these old event shirts? <laughs> 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 All right. I can I can see if I have a, a, an additional additional <laughs> one I could sell to you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> if I win, maybe I'll talk about the winnings. Well, I'd be able to sign a contract you. that you wouldn't have to pay me unless you won the raffle. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so the McLaughlin Kanema Trail project did get recommended for approval. Um, now this would be a planning grant, so it would allow us to actually facilitate planning 
it's not a construction type grant um, but we're moving forward with additional planning to connect the trail from the promenade down through the Kanema neighborhood to okay. the, to the uh, Kanema natural area and um, that sort of thing and provide wayfinding in the form of signs and those kinds of things and identify where pedestrian improvements can be made uh, given the existing conditions um, and also uh, providing a, a connection between Kanema and Main Street eventually yeah. uh, so that you can tie this whole area <coughs> in together. It's a great idea. Uh, Got to give uh, credit to Kelly Reed and Christina for coming up with that and all of you all for yeah. helping review it. Um, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, keep forward, moving forward and bringing more information on that <coughs> as it moves forward. Is there a timeline on that or anything like that? I Price early yet? Yeah. I don't know, yeah, but no, when I, I find that, I'll share it yeah. for sure. Um, if you made it to the open house for Willamette, for Willamette Falls Legacy Project, the final head count was 800 people showing up um, and participating uh, and giving us much more input and more detailed input on what they would like to see down at the falls when it's ultimately constructed and the river walk is constructed and uh, we had you know participation from a lot of <coughs> volunteers helping out and it was great the preliminary photographs and results are on the website but they haven't finished sifting through all of the input they got yet uh, that was really something yeah um, the uh, so there is a, there, we missed a grant workshop deadline, uh, <coughs> but we didn't miss the deadline, we missed the workshop um, April 11th for Nature in the Neighborhoods Restoration and Community Stewardship Grant. The deadline coming up is May 16th. Um, you can fill out a simple application by May 16th for a habitat restoration grant up to $50,000. I need to talk to Public Works and to what's the de What's the deadline on that date again? May, May 16th. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, generally, I've been to the workshops before. I think Jerry has. Um, yeah. Brian Boyce has been to those before as well. Um, generally they're talking, they talk about what things they will fund, yeah. what the local match has to be what types of projects they funded in the past and that sort of thing. All of that information is available on the Metro website. Um, it is a great grant source. Um, it's something that we need to take more advantage of, in my opinion, as a city. Uh, we just need to focus on which areas we really need to concentrate on. Um, they funded over $600,000 to 15 organizations in 2015. What was that amount? One of those um, was the ELC, I believe, but there are two separate programs. There's a restoration grant program, and then there's the capital program, which right. is much more ambitious and has to do with interpretive centers and structures and things of that nature, um, where the grant is, is, is the grant match requirement is a little higher. But uh, so. Please look this over. Um, talk to me if you have some ideas um, and want to pursue something because uh, NRC support would be critical to getting one of these grants. Uh, now. Is there something that your staff is thinking about in that vein at this time? <clears throat> I. We'll share with you what John Lewis has talked about, um, which may feed into this. Um, but I don't, I don't have anything right, right now clear. Um, one of the things that is going on with Public Works, um, and I'll just go into John Lewis's report. John was going to uh, come tonight, but he had other, other obligations. Um, so the Public Works Department is advertising statements of qualifications and a detailed project proposal from environmental consulting firms to prepare water quality improvement 
important habitat restoration feasibility studies for Clackamas Cove and adjacent areas along the Clackamas River. Um, so there's certainly, that's a formalized process with funding from Public Works. Um, the opportunity to do smaller projects outside of that scope, you know, still remains. Uh, my f feeling is that we should look at um, existing habitat areas and natural resources areas within city parks and public open space areas that we know uh, require significant renovation um, or weed removal and invasive species removal. Uh, that will help us prioritize. Uh, Water Board Park, for example, even though it's not a formal natural resources area, is a designated park and, and um, does have significant natural resources value. Um, Hillendale Park is another one. Um, Hillendale Park has a lot of problems with uh, water that's too warm um, and sedimentation, a lot of invasive species problems and very little money to fix it up. Mm. Um, so that would be a clear candidate in my mind. Uh, there are several parks that have streams flowing in them in the same condition. Um, so those would be obvious choices. And the Parks Department would love it if they could get support for a grant and somebody to help with uh, and come out and get, get uh, sweat equity and volunteer labor and that kind of thing because that's a part of the, part of the grant match. Um, can I can I come back to it? I'm, sure. uh, the 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 these grant applications you're talking about are to whom again? They are through Metro and they're they, provided. Oh, they're not the Metro enhancement grants that the city runs, and they're actually directly to Metro. They are funded by Metro, I believe. Right. So yeah. they're not they're not the tipping fee grants that the city awards. No. Oh, they're okay. Part of, they're part of the larger right. Metro um, bond funding. Um, for re maintenance and open space and habitat and within the entire UQB, yeah. You, yeah. now, mm -hmm. you're mentioning the, the possibility at parks. Is, uh, that's not something Public Works is putting forward, but is the parks, uh, I, I haven't heard from Parks and Rec. No, I haven't heard from Parks and Rec on this. So the, uh, this is something that, too that's coming for Public Works or something that, you think we ought to be looking at? I'm thinking that we could coordinate with the Parks and Rec Advisory Committee on that. Uh, okay. Yeah. So we're as shooting a, for May potential. 16th. <laughs> May 16th, we'd have to do something very yeah, quickly. Yeah, we'd have to do something very quickly, but um, there's another grant cycle coming up. I think they do it twice a year. Oh, so, okay. But, yeah. but this thing you're talking about with John Lewis or, mm -hmm. is related to water quality. Yeah, that's the same As it relates right. to public works yeah. responsibilities. Yeah. And that's for another funding source at Metro. So no, it's the same no. one, I think. Yeah. No, no, that's a that's a separate thing entirely. But oh. you know, when you have separate projects going on that accomplish the same goals, yeah. you can usually part of a grant application is, is what current things are going on right, in the city right, right. to support this that tie into this. So we're not yeah. the the grants that we're you're suggesting we take a look at. Mm -hmm. Are they are they the same metro grants that you're talking about in terms of what public works is putting forward, or are they different granting different metro grants? Different. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to confuse yeah, you. Could you start out your presentation talking about the cove and yeah. public works signing out right. RFQ? I think is that what it is? Request for qualifications or something? Yeah. So right. this this is something related to. Um, well, it's not related to the development, but it is something that the city commission wants to pursue. Yeah. Yeah. Neighborhood grants. Yeah. And that's funded by a, se a separate funding source from from Metro. Oh, okay. I, I don't know what that where that funding source. Well, you know, the, yeah. the two two things that Metro does with nature in the neighborhoods and whatever the other one's called are so closely aligned when you hear them. It's hard to differentiate which is which. <laughs> they are. That's and yeah, they need yeah. to do something about that. Yeah, that's my opinion. But. Yeah, the, well, the trails one was separate from the yeah. nature in the neighborhood was right. one. 
So actually, the, I meant to hand these out. This is the copy of the email from John Lewis. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Pass uh, that down. Just to be clear on um, what you were talking about in terms of grant applications to some of these parks that are have issues, mm -hmm. I want to make clear what who, who the granting source you were talking about was, or is that just to be identified yet, or is that the name? So, the grant workshop that I talked about with the May 16th deadline is with Metro um, and the deadline on that grant application is May 16th but there would be a second they do two of these a year okay yeah um, and it's funded by Metro bond money throughout the entire okay. Metro area um, and uh, See, Jerry, have you applied for one of these before? I, yes, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm shaking my head here. I, we uh, were trying to get Metro support to overhaul a Metro wetland, which right. was built as your requirement <laughs> yeah. to as a meet the needs of the uh, you know, land use functions at the transfer station. And I ran into this continuing blockade from the solid waste division that they didn't want people in there or wildlife. So if you don't want people, there's a trail. Trails a mile long almost, three quarters of a mile, including bridges that you put in. So if you don't, don't want people in there, why is, is there a trail? And then the second thing was if you don't want wildlife, what's the problem? The problem is the water quality is affected by wildlife. I said, well, <laughs> if, if the wildlife weren't there, then the water quality would be better. Yes. And I said, how about your petroleum spills? Because there are petroleums emanating from their facility into that area. And they said, well, don't talk about that. I said, well, we need to talk about that because, you know, we have to address that too. It goes to Clackamas Cove. Mm -hmm. That waterway goes. And it's a beautiful little site, but it, it's under, it needs help. Mm -hmm. So this week I was contacted by the Solid Waste Division because I was kind of squawking a little bit about all this and said, uh, they said, we're, we're going to have you work with uh, <clears throat> the uh, natural areas folks and, and, and come up with a solution to your problem. I said, it's not my problem, it's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> and we should be looking at how we all work together to make it work. There's tripping hazards everywhere in there, roots sticking up, you know. And I'm t saying this because we put in the trails there many, many years ago, along with other volunteers. I think you know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's an information kiosk that's never been used, ever. You know, it's still there. So it could play a role. Uh, but if, if, if the solid waste division is saying, no, we don't want anything done, then the nat natural areas funding people can't fund it. You see what I'm saying? Kind of catch point mm -hmm. too. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's been exciting. <laughs> Whose solid waste is it? The can I mean, the issue of the county? Well, it, no, it's the solid waste division of Metro. Oh. It oversees that wetland, you know. And, and uh, the first question would be, let's all work together to get it back into public use, safe public use, and let's encourage the wildlife, not discourage them. Now, this is the this is the facility next to the transfer station. Transfer station, yeah. okay. And it, it's about two acres. It, about yeah. No, I know, I know which, I know yeah, which pretty good size area. No. I, I just, uh, you know, I didn't. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, the other items John wanted to let you know about. Um, Public Works Operations have solicited quotes to complete the landscape maintenance contractor bids for the various open spaces and stormwater facilities. I think we had a presentation from Martin Montalvo about this last year. They've selected two contractors and the process resulted in $25,000 in savings and annual costs for the work. Wow. Um, Public Works is just kicking off the stormwater master plan update. Um, so uh, we did adopt the erosion control and design standards last year, but under, under the understanding that we would have to come back and update the stormwater master plan as well. 
So um, that will be a legislative process um, to update, and you'll have uh, opportunity to see that when it starts off. Um, Beaver Creek Road in 213, we think that this bid that he's talking about is with respect to extending the left turn lane from turn, up, turn pocket islands from Beaver Creek Road onto 213, the two left turn lanes that go from eastbound mm -hmm. onto northbound 213. Bids due early June, mid award, bid award on the 7th of the 6th of July, construction in August. Um, that will be removing part of the landscape median in order to make way for that. Um, the main item that John did want to talk to you about, um, which he may still come back and talk to you about in more detail with some plans to show you, is the operation center planning for the Center Street site, um, which you're familiar with. Um, they have had an architect looking at the original conditions of approval from the City Commission and many revisions from the original approved plan have been made um, with significant changes with respect to the upper yard where the bluff was originally proposed to be removed in the, con the, the basalt area. And that's in, in ingress, thing. egress changes? Too. Yeah, there's some changes yeah. to that. There's a lot of parking location changes and those kinds of things. Um, and uh, significant relocation of some of the original buildings as well. Uh, that's right. I'm, not, I'm glad to see him doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Not proposed to be a four-story building on Center Street anymore, um, but instead have a smaller administrative complex above within the site. So. Linked along the face of the bluff? Uh, that I can't remember. Um, okay. We'll have to send the, the site plans. So it really was an amazing design. Yeah, I, mean, I do, mm. I thought. All of those are important topics for the Public Works Department, and John felt of interest to the NRC. He did want to open the door, so if you have further questions about this, um, talk to him or to Martin okay. Montalvo, um, and I'll try to get you further updates on these things. Good. Anything to add? I, I really appreciate him doing this, sharing yeah, this information too. with us. You know, this is really yeah, good. This is great. Really good. <clears throat> Actually, this is almost kind of like what I'd like to see us do back and forth with Rack. Because mm -hmm. I don't know what mm -hmm. they're doing, you know. That would be kind of nice yeah. to put in pick, pickleball, pickleball, pickleball courts is what we're doing. That's what you're doing. <laughs> 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 is this yeah, for the Portland pickle? No, no. Baseball team? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> they were thinking about that name again. <laughs> I don't know. And and the women's sweat t-shirts are something else too. Okay, starting with communications, and so I'll start with you, Dorothy. Since you, you, you have the floor, go ahead. Communications. Communications. I'm, I'm assuming we're talking about communications. Well, we've got future yeah. agenda items here. Uh, oh, no. I, uh, uh, I was thinking about the same things that we were doing, which I guess didn't get put on here. It could be future agenda items. Does anybody want future agenda items? Then we'll come to communications. Any future I, I, I agenda items? Okay. <laughs> and, and that's the business that we looked at creating a portfolio of Riverside enhancement opportunities that the Lower Harbor Trust Fund could fund. I think I've talked about this before. And I think it's time that we get um, John Runyon here to tell us about how the Lower Harbor Trust Fund works. I, I do know that he's responding to the request for qualifications that was being discussed about the Cove. But that doesn't, I think, put him in a compromising position because he knows how it works. And we need, need to understand how it works. And I shared with at least a couple of people here uh, some opportunities, I think, that are possible from the north end of the city up toward the falls along the river edge that the Lower Harbor Trust Fund can help with. Now, Westland's got two projects going right now because they were introduced to the idea about six months ago by myself and John Borden, and now they're in the queue to get large amounts of money to solve some things on their side of the river. Gladstone is 
how do I say this nicely, throwing bombshells at, at uh, the idea of that was previously done by the previous council. And uh, so the Portland Harbor Trust Fund is still doing some things there, but may pull out. And we're in a very good position, I think, here with the cove. They love the cove idea right now, the Lower Harbor Trust Fund people, I was told. So I think we, we as a committee should take the lead and uh, see what we could do. Have John Runyon come speak to us at our next meeting, if that would be possible, if there's nothing else on the agenda, or somebody from that group, and, and see how we can submit ideas for consideration. Okay. All right. How do I do? <clears throat> yeah. Is the lower and I'm trust calling it the Pioneer Portfolio because <laughs> it's the Pioneer City, right? right. Okay. And, the, and the, the whole reason for the portfolio was you have to have some ideas for them to look at. Then they carry the ideas to the funding sources, and if they have traction, they fund them. So, anyway. Anything else for a future agenda item? Um, just the work plan items that we've added. We'll get an update on those. On what we did tonight. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see, we are anticipating getting a presentation from uh, Metro, I think, at some point. Um, with respect to. Uh, well, they've already come and talked to. Have, did Metro do a presentation on the uh, Newell Creek open space trailhead for you at this point? I've, uh, I've heard. I've, okay. I've heard presentations, but I don't know if they made a presentation to us. And not directly to the NRC. Yeah, you need to. Hmm. You need to check on that. Hmm. Um, we have a. We've held a pre-application conference with. Um, they're in the process of preparing a site plan and design review application that was submitted to the city for that. Yeah. Um, it will be reviewed as a site plan as well as a natural resources overlay district review for the portions that are within the city, within our, um, within our NROD. And then there's the day use area with some kiosks, an interpretive center, a parking area. Um, and then trailheads that are on different parcels that they own further north and further south. Back off of, uh, what is the, uh, the old Walmart site, there's a trailhead entrance point, which is primarily a maintenance road, but that would be part of the site plan. And then the majority of the trail system is outside the city limit in Clackamas County, so there's going to be some concurrent review going on with Clackamas County um, in the in that portion. Is, is yeah. Metro acquired the Walmart site? No. 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 Okay. Uh, but I think they, they've acquired a majority of the property north of the day use area. And the, where you go, you know, Warner Parrot Road, and there's another road, I think has another name that extends into it next to the Bank of the West. Yes. Uh, that will be the access to a park area, a park area that will be on top. Okay. And then the trails will end up from there and take per purchase that flat area on top. Uh, There's yeah. 12 acres up there. They did make a suggestion when, when Metro was giving a presentation on that area. I don't know who they were giving a presentation to. I was just a attending the meeting. And they had made suggestions of possibly putting a when they develop it, connecting a road. Um, Bill, not was it Bill mentioned? The one through, William, 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 William had William. mentioned a po another road that yes. connected over, which is a really good idea. They'd have to remove a tower too, but that was really, that was at the Metro Council meeting up at the museum. Okay. And they were doing a presentation up there. Now they made several pre public presentations. So. Yeah. That's a great, it, uh, that'll enhance that neighborhood up there so much in the park. It's really a jewel in our backyard. Uh, I'm going to suggest something, Pete. Uh, uh, have they indicated they wanted to come to us, or were you? Uh, 
Um, I was going to request they come and uh, at the time that they apply for the site plan review. If hopefully it will coincide with the meeting, but if it doesn't, I think it would be really good to invite um, Prack to that particular meeting. Okay. Okay. Anything else on the future agenda items? Oh, uh, just following up on what Dee Dee was saying about ways to promote or reward uh, good the, deeds. Well, good deeds, but specific to. Uh, Tree yeah, what what we do is is our natural resources. Yeah, so someone's doing dial it. In that more. There was also, um, and and I think we could do that outreach at at anything that we go to, if, you know, little stickers and things like that. You know, everyone loves to look like they're an honor student, <laughs> you know, um, of, of a type, you know, and then and then to have some small signage of when we're, when we're doing something just ourselves mm -hmm. and and p just make it noticeable everywhere we go what are, what's going on with there why is that one family doing one thing why you know we could really start with our schools our little kids you know they have that, such a wonderful program up the at the um the farmers market where money's get matched for kids, this is something we could reward somebody with great stickers and fun little T-shirts. Mm -hmm. Event, event so T-shirts. One tree, one family, one. Once a year. Just making something so small, like one tree, one family, once a year is that little? Yeah, but if fifteen people did it, yeah, you know, and then we can do a count. You know, you can do these funny little counts on the front of cities, like we're the city of trees, but. One of the really good ways I think Milwaukee is deters people to go 30 miles an hour is that they have a citation count at the beginning of their city. You walk in and it says, 2015, we gave away 1,200 citations. I can also say the I similar know, things. I, I know that our police department is not interested in that. <laughs> but you can do a positive way yes, that's right. <laughs> of this right. same thing. Mm. And, uh, and since we don't have our courier, we just have the Portland trip. We'll definitely have to work closely with that to shine all the, the positive little heroes. There are some high school students that set up, they were called Local Lords. And, and in the Local Lords, they had OC as OC's Local Lords. And you could turn that into Lake Oswego's Local Lords. And, you know, cities could really run on that whole little well, now, the think, Local Lord. You're looking, you're looking <laughs> to put that as an agenda item, is that right? Um, I, I don't know if it, I'm just blabbing because I have a chance. I'm just, um, no, it, not Okay, mostly. all right. Not but, you know, I mean, just yeah. something like that. Maybe we could, you know, reward somebody and, and try to get it as pictured as what we can, as well as we can. To, um, there was also another gentleman, Mark Matheson. I think you guys, most of you know him. He's, oh, the GIS idea. Yeah, he, yeah. he is at, a, he's a, at the Barkley Hills Neighborhood Association. And he works with CERT, which I don't know. It's, it's, I'm not. It's an emergency. Oh yeah, thing. I know Mark. Yep. Um, but he he knows very much about GSI systems. I know this much more than I knew about this much. And uh, and he was saying that he's quite the guru and that he's got a system of his own and he would like to help us identify public areas and gross scale and then see about how to map them i he thought he could do this well, whole the, thing in a couple months i think the city i mean the city has its own capabilities there. i agree yeah and i took and and i was being questioned then i could not those are not questions i could right. answer back i said please bring it to our meeting because i think i think if we and i thought i would see how some way we can embrace this but yeah. he didn't yeah, show in fact, the, uh, GIS department is keeps coming out with new versions of the current system, and it yeah. gets better each time. I like a little um, yeah. lesson. <laughs> they've done quite a bit of canopy mapping on their own, and incorporated separate layers for the GIS for Harris trees, street trees, because they're actually going down and pinpointing. Pick up, 
because if you rather than bring somebody else out to, to, to talk about it, I think the best thing is to have the city tell you what we can do. Oh, I agree. Oh, yeah. I agree. Yeah. This is just this is what came at me, and, yeah. I, and I then I had four follow up emails on it too, and I thought well, I got it. Bring this up. I'm, I'm going to move us. Yeah, I'm going to move us on to communications. And will that be part of your communications? Anything else you want to communicate? <laughs> those are my two things I wanted to say. Okay. I will the relay him because he didn't come. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't have a whole lot. I did have the opportunity to go to that Willamette Falls Legacy thing, and I really enjoyed going through all the different um, little sections there and looking at the map and the air photo and reading all the stuff and talking to some people and. And uh, yeah, I thought it was great. I mean, like I said, there's a lot of people there. And it was neat to see the community kind of come together as a, and kind of just embrace the project, it seemed like. So. Yeah, yeah I think uh, there's a lot of anticipation. It's kind of like a, I thought it was very clever about how looking. they made the. Yeah, all the. Well, yeah, like, uh, the, the relations, how yeah, they the correlated relations, the relations yeah. Yeah. how they tried to spur emotions out of you with pictures and how mm -hmm. they. There had to have been other psychological things that um, were spurring, like chocolate cake and stuff like that, had yeah. to spur some type of emotion that had to relate somewhere. Well, I think it just river. helps maybe bring it yeah. more to people's mind of actually what's going to happen, too. So, yeah. And put yeah. a red dot where you like and when you don't. Yeah. I like uh, that. Uh, I personally had a hard time with those. Uh, Feelings because I, I I felt personally it should have been tied more to the public access. And <laughs> when I saw, I believe it was one of my favorite pictures, the one that came from the movie Avatar. But I said it was a great science fiction movie. <laughs> I, I, that, was, that was my basis for it. But uh, so I, I I didn't quite share that aspect of it. But what I thought was great was having those tables there for the kids to color. They yeah. were enjoying it. And also the, the tables where you could talk to people that were actually focusing on the yeah. specific values of the of the uh, of the area and yeah. give your and they wrote down what you said and they were writing down what you writing said. Down what you said. I thought that was very good. Um, the uh, I I was sort of surprised that Saul isn't on this list. Uh, like I mentioned, the Great Oregon City Watershed Council set a different date other than that this particular date. It's coming up on Saturday for our. Clean up and working at the uh, uh, Aber Abernathy uh, Creek uh, Park that's there, and we're working directly with Solve on that particular uh, thing. And I would not know why the city would not have that as the partnership, mm -hmm. uh, unless they accidentally left it off. What date was that? The note the, for Abernathy Creek. Well, we've actually we've had so many people sign up, we've closed the signups. So I uh, just I don't want to discourage anybody. Yeah, no, uh, that's all right. Uh, but uh, uh, we've had a lot of people sign up, and perhaps more than we have tools for. Uh, what, what date? Same date? No, it's a, that's the point. It was a different date because we, uh, one of the principal groups we uh, use is the Oregon High Schools G, uh, J R uh, uh, J R O T C, and they had a different commitment on the twenty third. So that's why we advanced to the date. So yours this weekend. Yes, okay. and that's why we'll not be there at the LC. Oh. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's why we'll not be there at the LC. Um, uh, and I forgot what I was going to comment on that came up, and I decided to hold it afterwards. Does anybody remember what we were well, talking? It's your PRAC thing. I'm trying to figure out how we can have better communication with PRAC. Uh, I'll <laughs> I'll bring it up, but well, actually, there are, I think there are some areas that are that I think PRAC ought to look at. We've got we got areas that the Parks maintains that are not parks. Uh, that yes. whole stretch of uh, along the Clackamas River, that trail that yes. extends from the bridge on to Clackamas Cove, yes. it's city-owned property, and uh, I don't know why that's yeah. not a park. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and, and it's also a natural resource area, it's right on the Clackamas River within the floodplain. So, uh, I, I guess I think we need to see some broader inventory of. Of lands that the city owns that are in fact natural resource mm -hmm. uh, things that are really not um, okay. in any clear right. Right. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I sense also that parks and recreation staff are doing a lot of things that aren't parks and recreation functions to help maintain areas that nobody else will take care of and I didn't say that in a bad way no, no, I understand. Uh, I, I, uh, <coughs> uh, case in point, and there were 
trail interpretive center is maintained by Parks and Rec. And, and it's very well done, very well kept. Yeah. You know? um, so I, 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 and I, the natural resource areas that they involve themselves with, I think we could maybe give some input on. I don't know. But, um, so an inventory of city-owned properties are within the natural resource overlay district or other sensitive areas. Yep. Yeah. Depending on ownership, it might be urban renewal, might be parks, might be and, and who's maintaining would be a good question. Martin Montalvo oversees a bunch of contracts that you just talked about in John Lewis's report mm -hmm. for all the uh, detention areas and swales and so forth that they're required to maintain for water quality purposes. So who's doing the rest? And then they're doing a good job. I'm not opposed to it, but I mean, Yeah. <clears throat> Jerry, uh, any updates from you? No, but again, my question is, uh, like he sent us a report, John, can we, can we send something like of what we're doing to PRAC and vice versa? Could we ask them to send something of what they're up to to us? Uh, that was a yes. neat little summary that he just did, John Lewis. My, yeah, part of the, there was more, I think this is gets back to the more system systematized way of generating agenda items. Okay. Sending out a call to the departments well in advance of our meeting. Well, I'm going to suggest an alternative, and I'd say a, st a study session joint between PRAC yeah. and uh, yeah. and us. Um, I, I think perhaps that's the one of the best ways to deal with it. Okay. I mean, I've make, made the recommendation of signage for streams. I've done. S something a little different in Prac by talking about signage from major streets where you can actually go through a park to get to a different destination. So to indicate that what the trail systems operating in some of those parks okay. are. Okay. So I'm sure there are lots of things that we could uh, think about that uh, are of joint interest to both yeah. groups. Sure. Probably more than any other committees. Yeah. And so I would suggest that we put it forward as a joint study session. I think it would be well to do it in conjunction with that uh, that August uh, September time when we we're talking about goal setting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there might be a benefit at at the <coughs> lead end of that period of time to get Prac and us together. Mm -hmm. uh, there may be something that we can do within joint goals and in the process, uh, perhaps create greater strength for the city to go ahead and budget some things that we we'd like to see budgeted yeah. if, if both of these entities are going forward on some of those things. Good. Sounds good. <clears throat> yep. Ginger. No, I'm good. You, you know you're good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean it that way. <laughs> oh, um, how do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> anyway. Um, so good. Anything else for the good of the order? Okay, good. Okay, we're finished. Thank you. Good.